Good afternoon and welcome to Ray Sumter Field here in Bryan as we get ready for NWOAL baseball on a beautiful Monday. Temperature here in the low to mid 60s. Feels like temperature though in the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. But still beautiful weather and get a chance to see a good one today and at least on paper a terrific pitchers matchup uh, here in this one. Today it is 6 and 5. Brian sets a square off with 6 and 3. Archibald. The NWOAL records, though, are what's uh, most important as we bring those into play today. Archibald, one of two league unbeatens. Everybody chasing Evergreen, who is 4-0 and in the NWOAL. Archibald is 2-0, and and Brian doing everything they can to hang in the race, coming in at 2-1 and on the season. Time to introduce the starting lineups for this one this afternoon, brought to you by the Fackler Monument Company in downtown Montpelier for the Archibald Blue Streaks, coached by... Uh, Jeff Brunswick, who is in his first year as the head coach, but 27 years prior to that was an assistant coach at Archibald. Leading off is the center fielder, Jack Hurst. Hitting second, the shortstop, Stephen Diller. Batting third and pitching this afternoon for Archibald is Jaden Seiler. In the cleanup spot, the third baseman, Brian Burrows. Batting fifth, the third ba- uh, first baseman, Mason Siegel. Hitting sixth and catching is Jet Vaughn. Batting seventh, the DH, Broden Piercefield. Batting eighth, the right fielder, Josiah Gomez. And in the number nine spot for the Blue Streaks is left fielder, Anthony Williams. Defensively for Brian, uh, around the outfield, it will be Cole Uran in left, Cade Carlin in center, and Mason Welling in right. Carter Luce gets the start at first base, Lazarus Lane at second, Jace Kepler at third, and Noah Heward is the shortstop. Starting behind a plate is Camden Bukowski, and on the mound today for Brian is right-hander Carter Dominic. We'll dive into numbers on the, the pitchers and hitters and talk a lot more as this game unfolds. It's Archbold at Brian on B-Rock Sports. Camco Industries, with facilities located in West Unity, Ohio, and Marincy, Michigan, has openings on all three shifts for production and assembly operators. We manufacture interior plastic products for the automotive industry. As an operator, you will be required to visually inspect, trim, assemble, and pack parts, as well as label containers. You must be able to pass an entry-level test and a substance abuse test. Camco also has openings for shipping associates, material handlers, and production leads. Camco offers a complete benefit package. If you would like to join our team, please complete an application online at www.kumi-na.com or in person at Camco, 1001 East Jackson Street, West Unity, Ohio, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. All rehires will be considered for employment. Hi, this is Mackenzie Now with Andries O'Neill and Lowe Insurance Agency. Having a winning tradition for over 100 years is a big deal for any team, as our team at Andries O'Neill and Lowe Insurance Agency celebrates this milestone. We know success does not happen by accident. It takes great teammates and partners like Central Insurance. By dedicating ourselves to the community, our clients, and each other, Andries O'Neill and Lowe has consistently risen above the rest in protecting your family, assets, and businesses. Thank you to all who have played a role in this 100-year journey. Learn more at andreasoneillandlow.com. Thanks for being with us here this afternoon as we bring you back here to Ray Sumter Field. And, Brian, it's the Streaks and the Golden Bears. Carter Dominic getting the ball for Brian. He has been terrific for the Bears this year. Four and one with a minuscule .21 earned run average in 32 innings of work. This will be his sixth appearance and sixth start of the season. Uh, Dominic has allowed 11 hits has given up just one run on the year. It was an earned run. He struck out 35, walked nine, and has hit a batter for the season. And he'll be taking on this Archibald lineup uh, that has been pretty good for the Blue Streaks for most of the year. Again, in the outfield, Cole Uran, Cade Carlin, and Mason Welling around from left to right. Carter Luce is at first, Lazarus Lane at second, Jace Kepler at third, Noah Heward the shortstop, and handling Carter Dominic today is Camden Bukowski. Both teams 
uh, coming off Saturday games, and we're going to dive into a little bit more of that as the afternoon rolls on. But uh, Archibald rolled over Eden 27-6, to while Brian was pounded by number one ranked Coldwater 21 to nothing. Fifth game in six days, and and uh, obviously deep in the staff, and you assume Coldwater was as well, uh, but still a very impressive Coldwater performance on Saturday and one that Brian is really happy that they're playing a Monday game because they get a chance to get the taste of not only that game but the Friday uh, game against Evergreen out of their mouth as well. Dominic finishing his warm-ups here this afternoon. Evergreen has been the talk of the NWOAL in terms of their start, not only off to a 4-0 and start, but 8-4 and overall. Evergreen, Archbold, Brian, Patrick Henry, Swanton, all teams above 500 on the season. It has become basically right now a three-team race, Evergreen, Archbold, and Brian, everybody else with at least two conference losses. It will be Jack Hurst starting things for the Blue Streaks, hitting 4-0-6. The slash line is 472 as an on-base and 1,066 for an OPS, and he's slugging at 594. Hurst leads the team in hits on the year with 13. No homers, 11 runs batted in, and is second on the team in runs scored with 11. So the right-handed hitting Hurst. The umpires today who have their eyes on the game presented to you, uh, of course, by... And it'll be Chris Fiddler behind the plate. And on the bases will be Steve Elwood. Right-hander Carter Dominic. right hand hitting Jack Hurst. Dominic from the first base side of the rubber. Kicks and fires. It's a breaking ball that's over for strike one. Very senior-laden Archibald team. In fact, everybody in the lineup is a senior. For the Blue Streaks here this, this afternoon. Hurst takes high with a fastball. It is one and one. Actually, Broden Piercefield, that's the one correction. He's the DH and is a junior. Everybody else a senior. The one one from Dominic. Swung on, ground ball to Heward at short. Has plenty of time, fires across, and retires Hurst, who can move pretty well. For the first out of this baseball game. That'll bring Steven Diller to the plate. Diller is hitting 333 on the year. No homers, seven runs batted in. Leads the team in runs scored with 14. Another right handed stick in this Archibald lineup. The first offering is swung on, hit high into the air to Cole Uran in left field, and he is there. Four out number two. One pitch and a second out. Retiring Diller. And now it is the Archibald pitcher, Jaden Seiler. Seiler will come to the plate. Hitting 310 on the year. On base of 444 and an OPS of 858. He does have Archibald's only home run on the year. Plus nine runs batted in. Hits here with the bases empty and two down. Deep in the right-handed box, Dominic deals, slider a little bit inside, ball one. One ball, no strikes. Two down, bases empty here in the top half of the first inning. The eyes on the game were brought to you, of course, by Hedda. Had a brain cramp there, brought to you by Tri-State Vision Center. Tri-State Vision Center, make your next eye appointment and... They have their eyes on you and the eyes on the game. Chris Fiddler and Steve Elwood are those eyes today. Two balls, no strikes as that fastball was in on Jaden Seiler. The next offering just missed outside for ball three with a fastball, touching 80 on that fastball. Archibald, a team that traditionally has just made its living going at least to the districts, if not farther. Fastball down Broad Street for strike one. They made it to the districts again last year, did the Blue Streaks, in an 18-9 and nine season. And they lost to Ottawa Hills, who eventually advanced to the Final Four. The 3-1, down low, ball four. So a two-out walk issued by Carter Dominic, and it's the cleanup man, Brian Burrows.
Actually, and I had spoke, misspoke. Siler does not have the home run. No homers, eight RBIs for Siler. It is Burroughs with a home run and nine runs batted in. He's hitting 286 on the year. Siler getting a decent lead at first. Dominic delivers, and it's fouled back. This is an Archibald team that has stolen 43 bases on the season. Siler has nine of them. Archibald has not been caught stealing yet this season. Two outs, bases em- or, uh, two outs, runner on first here in the top of the first inning. No score, Archibald and Bryan. Siler inching off first. Does not go. Fouled back by Burroughs, and he's in an 0-2 hole here. Blue Streaks have wins over, as we said, Eden this past Saturday. Also defeated Ayersville, Patrick Henry, Swanton, Elmwood, and Holgate. The P.H. Swanton games, of course, are their two league wins. Lost early to Edgerton. Lost in eight innings to Anthony Wayne and hammered by Perrysburg. Here's the throw over, and Siler is picked off, hung out to dry, and now he's caught in a rundown. Heward is chasing him back to first, and now it's Dominic who's got the baseball, chasing him towards second, tosses, and the tag is applied, and Siler is picked off for the third and final out. So the two-out walk does no damage, no score. Archibald with Brian coming up for the first time. Are you in the market for high quality appliances and furniture? Look no further than DirectLink Appliance and Furniture. We have a wide selection of Whirlpool made tag and KitchenAid appliances, as well as service on all makes and models. DirectLink also carries Ashley Furniture and Jameson mattresses. And new to the store, Molecule mattresses, made right in Auburn, Indiana. Don't miss out on unbeatable prices and top-notch service on everything you need to turn your house into a home. Visit DirectLink Appliance and Furniture in Bryan today. You work hard for your money. That's why we see to it that your money works hard for you, not someone else. At Midwest Community Federal Credit Union, our earnings belong to our members and go right back to work for you from better rates to lower fees. We've got the products and people to help you build a more fantastic future every step of the way. Join 14,000 other people just like you who want to do more with their money. Imagine a different possibility at Midwest Community Federal Credit Union. Brian lineup leading off the shortstop, Noah Heward, batting second, the third baseman, Jace Kepler. In the number three spot, the pitcher, Carter Dominic, batting cleanup, the center fielder, Cade Carlin. Batting fifth, the left fielder, Cole Uran. Hitting sixth, the second baseman, Lazarus Lane. Batting seventh, the first baseman, Carter Luce. Hitting eighth and catching is Camden Bukowski. And batting ninth is the DH, Elijah Fry. Defensively for the Blue Streaks, Anthony Williams is in left, Jack Hurst in center, Josiah Gomez in right. Mason Siegel starts at first, Brady Basic at second, Brian Burrows at third, Stephen Diller is the shortstop. Jet Bond behind the plate, and on the mound is Jaden Seiler. He has worked 16 and a two-thirds innings this season. This will be his fourth start and fifth appearance of the season. Has a record of 2-0 and in allowing just uh, nine hits. He's given up four runs, three of them earned, struck out 14, walked eight, and hit a couple of batters on this season for the blue streaks has an era of 1.26 again he'll be facing noah heward jace kepler and carter dominic to start things heward slashing 303 385 and ops of 718 as the bears shortstop will dig in no homers six runs driven in brian a team that did advance to the district semis last year or district five uh district semis last year after a sectional championship win over napoleon won nothing it was the first sectional crown for the bears since pre-covid 2019 lost to defiance that arch nemesis in the postseason bulldogs won three nothing it's the third year for head coach Corey walker replacing jeff inselman as the head coach here in bryan and walker an archibald grad Right-hander against right-hander. Seiler, high leg kick, fires, and a swing and a miss by Heward for strike one. We mentioned a miserable weekend for Brian, not only losing to number one ranked Coldwater, 21-0 on Saturday, but lost 10-1 to Evergreen in a league game on Friday. Here's the one strike from Seiler, and that's lined into right field for a base hit over the outstretched glove and leap by Brady Basic and a leadoff single for Noah Heward to start this game. 
That'll bring Jace Kepler to the plate in the number two spot. Kepler hitting 348 with an on base of 531 and an OPS of 1,053. That average is good for second best on the team. No homers, three runs driven in. Eight runs scored, eight walks he has drawn. Takes low and away, snap throw down and not in time. Jet Bond tried to retire Heward and unable to do so. Heward with speed and quickness leads the team with seven stolen bases. Brian, a team with 25 stolen bases on the year. So not in a really a running team per se. The throw over dug out by Mason Siegel. Diving back was Heward. A ball and a strike. There's one a dozen last year. Went 12 and 14. Fastball down low and away. One and or two and one, I beg your pardon, as the count. 12 and 14, went three and four in the NWOAL a season ago. Graduated a half dozen, including their number one pitcher, Dylan Dominic, replaced by brother Carter now as the number one arm this year. Siler ready to deal, the 2 1. Fastball down in the dirt, scoots away from Bond, but not enough for Heward to advance. And Siler now behind three balls and one strike. Wins this year for the Bears over Ottawa Glandorf, Elida, Van Wert, Southview, and Delta all convincing fashion. 8 0, 13 2, 4 zip, 7 0, 14 3, respectively. And then shut out Patrick Henry, 2 0. 3 and 1. Siler delivers. Kepler squares, pulls back, takes a strike on the inside corner. It is 3 and 2. The Bears' losses are close ones to Maumee, Wayne Trace, and Whitmer. And then the bludgeonings by Evergreen and Coldwater. Stepping off the rubber is Siler. They lost six, brought eight letter winners back, including five starters. The payoff pitch. A little bit outside, ball four. A leadoff single for Heward. A walk drilled, uh, picked up by Kepler. And now the table is set for Carter Dominic. A chance to help the cause here. Dominic in that number three hole. Hitting 469 on the year with an on base of 538. Slugging at 625 and has an OPS of 1163. 12 runs driven in. Dominic takes off speed for strike one. He has also been able to deliver for Brian with runners in scoring position this year, hitting 563 at that clip. The pitch cuts and misses, and now he's in an 0-2 hole as they stayed off speed. Did Siler. Brian began the year 4-0. and I've gone 2-5 since. So trying to right the ship here. Late April. Two on, nobody out. Bottom of the first, no score. The 0-2 down in the dirt with a breaking ball. Bon blocked it, kick saved it aside, and Hewer didn't get a good enough read to see if he could advance. It's a ball and two strikes. Archbold, meanwhile, just the opposite of Brian. A slow start at one and three, but have rattled off five in a row now. One ball, two strikes. Right-hander against right-hander. Siler stares in, comes set at the belt. Here comes his 1-2 delivery. Down low and away, 2-2. Two and two. Four of the five have been off-speed pitches. Dominic, real good fastball hitter. Outfield playing him deep. Pretty much straight up. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Swung on, drilled towards center field. Jack Hurst moving over toward the fence in the gap off the top of his glove. It'll fall. Runners had to hold up. Now Heward being waved around. He will score on the double by Carter Dominic and the Bears draw first blood. Carter Dominic collecting the RBI as he crushed that one to right center field. Hurst gave it a good run, and it bounced off the top of his glove, just couldn't haul it in. 13th run driven in by Carter Dominic. That'll bring up Cade Carlin to the plate now. Carlin hitting 263 with no homers and three runs batted in. 
Second and third, nobody out. Carlin squares and then rips one down the left field line. Just foul. Archibald had brought the infield in. Bears feeling early momentum in this one. A single by Heward, a walk to Kepler, a double by Dominic. And now second and third and nobody out. They are pinched in at the corners and playing back up the middle. Seiler now goes to the stretch. Another right-handed bat in Carlin at the plate. Carlin, a sophomore, playing here varsity squares. Bunt and Bunt's foul. That was going to be a safety squeeze to try to get Kepler home. Kepler, a terrific story of just guts. He is playing. If you're not here and seeing it, if you're a Bryan fan, you've seen it all year. That left knee, a torn ACL from basketball season, plus the meniscus was torn and still gutting it out, basically being told nothing else you can do damage to it. He's going to go as long as he can, as hard as he can, for as much as he can in his senior year for baseball. Carlin steps out of the box, nothing into the count. one nothing. Brian, bottom of the first inning, runners on second and third, nobody out against Jaden Seiler. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swung on, ground ball to third. Burrows gobbles it up, checks the runner at third, throws across, retires him. Late break by Kepler, breaks and scores. It's 2 to nothing on the ground out by Cade Carlin. Moving to third was Dominic on the throw. Carlin will pick up the RBI. And it'll bring Cole Uran to the plate. Trying to get out of an early season funk. Uran hitting a buck 90 on the year. No homers, three runs batted in. This is a Bryan team that came into today scoring 60 runs in their 11 games. Infield still in at the corners, back up the middle with Dominic at third and one down. Right-hander against right-hander. Seiler deals. Misses high with an off-speed pitch, 1-0. 2-0, Brian, on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Seiler shaking off Vaughn. Now we'll straighten. The 1-0 pitch. Fastball paints the outside corner and at the knees. It's 1-1. One one. Blue Streaks lost five from last year, including the NWOAL Player of the Year in Creighton Kern, who was lost to graduation. It's a good defensive team. They've only committed 13 errors in nine games on the season. It's a team that's used to going deep in the postseason. The 1-1, a bunt foul as it will roll over to the near the Archibald dugout. Creighton Kern, of course, not the only Kern of Archibald notoriety. Brother Cade drafted in the 17th round in 2023 by the Atlanta Braves, right now playing at single-A Augusta. Cade Kern hitting 231 with a homer and four RBIs so far this year. Here's the 1-2. Did he get him to offer up? Yes, he did on a pitch down and away for strike three. And Cole Uran down on strikes. A big punch out for Jaden Seiler. And now there are two away, and everybody can play normal on the corners and that will bring up Lazarus Lane, the second baseman. Lane hitting 176 with three runs batted in. Foul tips that one, 0 and 1. Blue Streak 6 and 3, 2 and 0 in the NWOAL. Bears 6 and 5, 2 and 1 in the NWOAL. Evergreen is 4 and 0. Here comes the one strike. Well, it'll have to wait. By the way, today, Liberty's at Delta. Evergreen is playing at Swanton, and Patrick Henry is at Wasion. Here's Seiler's 0-1. Breaking ball, strike two. Trying to minimize this damage. A Dominic double score to run, and then a Carlin ground out. Punched in the other. Two to nothing, Bears, bottom of the first inning. Seiler. Fires, that one's popped into the air. It's trouble into shallow right field, and it'll bloop in there for a hit. And Dominic cruises in to make it three to nothing. 
The bloop single by Lane gives him his fourth RBI, and the seventh man will come to the plate for the Bears this inning. Carter Luce. Luce hitting 316 on base of 435 and an OPS of 751. Has four runs batted in. Kind of a Swiss Army knife for this Brian team. Will play multiple positions for them. A visit to the mound now for Jet Vaughn. Three nothing Bears. Long way to go, but already the stink of the weekend has been dusted off just a little bit with the losses Friday to Evergreen 10-1 and Coldwater Saturday 21-zip. Off to a good start here today in a critical league game for Brian. For both teams, but Brian with a one-league loss. Loose takes a fastball away, and it's 1-0. Siler's biggest issue this inning, he's falling behind Brian Hitters. One ball, no strikes. Lane with a lead at first. The pitch to Loose. Swung on and miss. 1-1. One one. Only game for us this week. We'll see Brian at Defiance a week from this Friday. That'll be May. And it's the Friday right before the tournament drawings or pairings are unveiled. Here comes Siler's 1-1 pitch. Off speed, caught the corner for strike two. A ball and two strikes. Three runs on three hits in the inning for Brian. Lane is at first, two away. Bottom of the first, three nothing, Brian. Siler is ready. Down low, and Bond keeps it in front of him. It's two and two. Have a makeup game coming up then on May the 7th. Critical one in the BBC is Eden will play at Montpelier. That's a Tuesday the 7th. Two balls, two strikes, two down in the inning. The pitch swung on, fouled back by Luce to hang in this A.B. Jeff Brunswick, terrific story of perseverance. Had been the varsity assistant at Archibald for almost three decades, 27 years. And now getting a crack at the head coaching job. Loose takes inside corner, strike three, as he just kind of handcuffed him to end the inning. However, Brian gets three runs on three hits. They leave a man aboard, and after one, on top of Archibald, 3-0. The more your life changes, the more your insurance needs change. See Danielle Van Atta of Danielle Van Atta Agency today. She can conduct a free personal insurance review to help you determine how much and what type of coverage is right for you with no costly gaps or overlaps. Interested? Phone Danielle Van Atta today at 419-636-0408. When it comes to choosing a memorial that represents the lasting memories of a person's life, the Fackler Monument Company in Mount Pelier, Ohio can create exactly what you are looking for, like an eagle soaring through the woods etched on a memorial a bench that has mom and dad's names engraved into the granite to sit and reflect a picture of the family farm etched on the stone or maybe your style is a memorial that has a split headstone with a vase in between for flowers the Fackler Monument Company of Mount Pelier, Ohio serving families in the tri-state area since 1924 Four, five, and six for Archibald do up here in the top half of the second inning. It'll be Brian Burroughs, Mason Siegel, and Jet Bond to face Carter Dominic. Good start to this one for the Bears as they get three runs on three hits in the inning. RBIs for Carter Dominic on the double. Lazarus Lane on a single and then a ground ball out. Cade Carlin picking up the RBI. So it'll be Brian Burroughs, the Archibald third baseman. He's hitting 286, has an on base of 429 and an OPS of 929. Home run, nine RBIs. Remember, he was at the plate. Actually, they didn't go in order. I beg your pardon. Seiler drew a walk and then was picked off for the third out of the inning. And Burroughs was at the plate. So Archibald will have to dig out of a 3 nothing hole here, but very, very early in this one. Dimensions here at Sumter, 320 down the lines, 350 to the alleys, right center and left center alleys, and 370 to straightaway center. Outfield medium deep, pretty much straight away for Burroughs. Dominic 
delivers his first pitch, a fastball and a swing and a miss, nothing in one. Burrows behind the 82-mile-an-hour fastball there. Here's Dominic's 0-1 delivery. A little bit low, 1-1. One and one. All seniors for the Blue Streaks, except for D.H. Broden Piercefield. He is a junior. Both these programs, of course, very tradition-rich in baseball. Lots of fastball inside corner, strike two. Lots of NWOAL titles and deep postseason runs. And players taking their games to the next level, whether it be college or professionally. Carter Dominic's 1-2, swung on, hammered, and a catch made by third baseman Jace Kepler as he spears it. That was headed for left field off the rocket shot of Burroughs, but a great play defensively by Kepler at third for the first out of the inning. Dominic acknowledges his third baseman. Mason Siegel now will dig in. Siegel, the Archbold first baseman. Hitting 321. Takes a slider away. 472 on base, 901 OPS. No homers, three runs batted in. The 1 0 pitch is a fastball grounded to Kepler on the second hop. Great glove work down there and guns it across for the second out of the inning. Tricky second hop that handcuffed Jace Kepler. And again, Doing great work and easily getting Siegel. Two down in the inning, and that'll bring up Jet Vaughn, the catcher. Vaughn hitting just 208 on the year with seven runs batted in. It's a team that's hitting 292, the Blue Streaks. Vaughn fastball outside corner was taking all the way. They have an on base of 419 and an OPS of 830. We said 74 runs scored. They've drawn 42 walks, struck out 62 times on the season. The one strike offering missed up and in, one and one. Two down, bases empty, second inning. Three nothing, Brian, on the Andres O'Neill and Low scoreboard. You're in this NWOAL collision at Sumter. Dominic in the one one. Fastball painted black, one and two. Vaughn, the number six hitter in this lineup. Dominic, good rhythm here to start this game here early on. His 1-2 swung on, fouled away, and out of play. Bukowski gave it a peek. Bukowski is an interesting story. The lone freshman in this lineup and a freshman behind the plate. Tough spot to be thrown to the fire, but he is doing a nice job. Carter Luce and Cade Carlin are sophomores that are in this varsity lineup. 1-2, bouncing ball up the middle. Heward behind the bag at second. Fires across to complete the 1-2-3 inning. Middle of the second in Sonny Bryan. Bears three, streaks nothing. The Bryan Athletic Boosters would like to wish all the student athletes the best of luck in all their sports this year. The Boosters are proud of your commitment to becoming Bryan Built. It takes a lot of time and dedication to play sports and be the best student you can be at the same time. Good luck this year. The Bryan Athletic Boosters would also like to thank all of their corporate and individual patron supporters this year as well. It takes everyone to make a community and to become Bryan Built. Your home is the one one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Starks Plumbing and Heating Services helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Starks Plumbing and Heating Services and see how soon you can get a Lennox home comfort system that'll help improve your health and your mood. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call us today at 1-800-329-4040 or visit us at StarksPHS.com. 8, 9, and 1 for the Bears here in the bottom of the second inning. Camden Bukowski, Elijah Fry, and Noah Heward. Bukowski, the catcher, hitting 148. No homers, no runs batted in as of yet. On base of 343 and has an OPS of 528. It's a Bears team. We told you what Archibald did at 292. Brian at 252. 
as a team average this year. They're on base is 373, OPS of 682. 60 runs scored. They've drawn 44 walks, struck out 58 times on the season. And waiting to get this bottom of the second inning underway here. Happy you could be with us here in Bryan. Carter Dominic for the Bears. Jaden Seiler on the mound for the Blue Streaks. Bears got to Seiler with a three spot in the bottom half of the first inning. I'm trying to keep that momentum going. We mentioned the rich history of both these schools. Of course, one of Bryan's, if not the most successful, certainly in that discussion. Brian, uh, Matt Whistler calling it a career this past off season. What a run for Matt Whistler. Pitching into his early 30s, multiple teams made a really good living and did it the right way. Will go on to have a terrific career in his second act as well, but made Brian extremely proud, made Northwest Ohio extremely proud with the career he had doing it as a starter in all kinds of roles in a relief role. Bukowski takes a fastball, ball one. That one bounced back and missed. Or did it hit the face mask of Jet Vaughn? Might have even ricocheted off Chris Fiddler as well. Either way, it's a ball and it's 1-0. and oh. But Matt Whistler stepping aside, saying the travel, the grind, it was enough. Swung on, high chopper. It's going to be a tough play. That was barehanded by Brian Burrows, and then he airmails the throw. Bukowski is safe. That'll be E5 on the throw. Bukowski had him. or Bukowski was retired, I should say. Burrows had him. The hop, it was barehanded. Didn't mean to be initially. He was trying to play it with his glove, but the way it caromed into his bare hand, he still had plenty of time. But the E5 will get Bukowski aboard. And that'll bring up Elijah Fry for the Bears. Fry hitting 176 on the season. A few of these guys trying to get their bats going. Possible bunting situation, and Archibald's thinking that. Burroughs is in two steps on the grass. Pulled back and took high with a fastball and in, ball one. So Fry was looking to maybe lay one down. He's DHing for Brian right fielder Mason Welling. Second straight inning, the Bears get their leadoff man aboard. 1-0 and the count on Fry. Bukowski not much of a threat to run. Fry squares. It's an off-speed pitch as he pulled the bat back for strike one. 1-1 one and one on Elijah Fry. Burroughs is about three steps and moving closer at third. Seiler stares in. The 1-1. Fry takes away the snap throw down. Bukowski is back at first. It's 2-1 and one now on Elijah Fry. Three-nothing Bears, bottom of the second inning. Bukowski's aboard at first. Nobody out. The 2-1 to Fry. Stabs at a bunt and foul tipped it, so it's now 2-2. Two and two. And now has to protect the plate at two balls and two strikes. Unable to get that bunt. It was a tough one to handle bunting-wise, a pitch that was up and out of the zone. It's an NWOAL this year that is really coming in. There was no heavy favorite. Maybe a favorite Archibald. Evergreen got some notice, but for the most part, flying under the radar coming in and playing well. 2-2, swung on, hammered into left field for a base hit. And just like the first inning, first and second for Brian here in the second inning. And nobody out. And the guy that got it started for the Bears, Noah Heward, will now dig in. Heward one for one, a single and a run scored, and now a trip to the mound to talk with Jaden Seiler, who has been in and out of trouble here in this game. 
the staff for Archibald. Jeff Brunswick is the head coach. Kirk Weldy, the varsity assistant. Tanner Wise, I believe that's who is out at the mound now, is a volunteer varsity assistant. The JV coach is Derek Martinez. They have a couple of volunteer JV assistants and then freshman co-coaches that are Tanner Wise and Toby Walker. Jeff Brunswick taking over for Dick Selgo, who had the wheel of the program successfully for a lot of years. Jeff Brunswick, of course, you know that name. It is baseball royalty from around the area, down in that cold water area. Dad Lou, a legend. Jeff and brothers, really good players. And now the visit is over, and there will be some activity in the bullpen. Zach Short is going to throw for Archibald here in the second. Heward squares, yanks the bat back, takes a strike. The throw down to second. Bukowski is back in time, but had strayed a little farther than maybe Corey Walker had anticipated or had wanted him to. Short, a lefty, is throwing. Heward handles the bat very well. Bukowski's at second. Fry is at first. Nobody out. Bottom of the second inning. Brian leading it already three to nothing and looking to add to this lead. This would be setting the table for Kepler and Dominic, the two best hitters and run producers in this Bears lineup. Here's the 0-1. Heward gets one down and comes back to Seiler. He didn't even look at third. Probably had a shot at Bukowski, but takes the safe out and retires Noah Heward at first. Runners now go to second and third with one down in the inning. Bukowski, as we said, doesn't run extremely well. Had Seiler take at a peak, I think he might have had a chance to get him. But nonetheless, we move on. And now everybody in on the infield in a 3 nothing game with runners on second and third. Jace Kepler walked and came around to score a run in the first inning. Wide stance in the right-handed box. Seiler deals. Curve ball down and away, one and one. One ball, one strike. Bears with an early chance to explode here. Already up three zip for Carter Dominic on the mound. Here comes Siler's 1-0 delivery. Batting out in front of that one, waves and misses one and one. Good breaking pitch that time from Siler. One ball, one strike. Outfield still playing fairly deep and straight away. Here's Siler's 1-1. Down low, caroms away from Jet Bon, and Bukowski won't advance. And Corey Walker talking to his youngster about getting a better read on that because that thing rolled all the way over near the Archibald dugout like where you go into the Archibald dugout, if you're familiar with things here at Sumter Field. You get that good read, you get that good secondary, and you can get that run in. Two balls and a strike on Jace Kepler. Righty against righty. Seiler taking extra time and now is ready, and now a timeout is taken by Kepler. So the mind games. Bukowski at third, Fry at second, one away here in the second. 3 nothing. Brian on the Andres O'Neill and Low scoreboard looking for more. Kepler is ready in the box. Seiler comes set. The 2-1. Breaking ball, fisted into right field for a base hit. Bukowski will score. Fry comes around. He's going to get in there, and it's 5 nothing. RBI single the other way for Jace Kepler. Still only one out in the inning. Kepler with that torn ACL and meniscus is basically station to station. I mean, he can move still, but it's not like he used to. The mobility and the speed... But, boy, give the kid tons of credit. Not just gutting it out and just like a cute story, he is producing with that 
torn ACL and meniscus. Bears, five runs on five hits and looking for more with Kepler at first and Dominic at the dish. There goes Kepler. Down in the dirt, it will be a stolen base. What are you saying, Andy? He can't run? One ball, no strikes on Carter Dominic. He doubled in a run. Drove one deep to right center field, and that leash might getting a, be getting a little tighter here on Seiler, especially if Dominic delivers again. Kepler at second, the pitch. Low and away, 2-0 and oh to Carter Dominic. Dominic began the day hitting 469. Already with a double. Hitters count here at 2 0. Hammers one back to the screen, 2 and 1 now. Five zip bears on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Brian batting in the second inning. Kepler, who just drove in a pair with a soft liner to right field. Seiler comes set at the belt. Step, no throw to second. Seiler wobbling now early in this one. Can Brian apply the KO? Here's the 2-1. Off speed, fouled out of play, off to the right. That'll even the count at two balls and two strikes now. So glad you could be with us here on this beautiful Monday. Got some weather moving in, it appears, into tomorrow, so Tuesday games would look at least a little bit sketchy. But a beautiful day today as we began in the low to mid-60s, temperature-wise and sunshine. The 2-2, down in the dirt, ball three. On deck is Cade Carlin, the sophomore cleanup hitter for the Bears. Three and two on Carter Dominic. Seiler comes set at the belt. The payoff, breaking ball inside, ball four. And Dominic is aboard for a second time. And that'll bring up Cade Carlin. Picked up an RBI his first time up on the ground out. Kepler's at second, Dominic at first. Still only one away in the inning. Five zip, Brian. Short is ready if needed for the Blue Streaks. Lefty had been warming up down there. Here's Seiler. Fastball on the outside corner. Strike one. Zach Short, if he would be called in, a junior for Archibald. No balls and a strike. On Cade Carlin, one down in the inning. Here comes that one strike pitch. Carlin pops it up, right side. Mason Siegel being called off by second baseman Brady Basic, who lunges to make the grab for out number two now in the inning. And it's up now to Cole Uran. Uran, the junior left fielder, struck out his first time up. Bats here with two on and two out. Here's the first offering. Uran takes down on the dirt, ball one. Uran has one two out RBI, is hitting 250 with runners in scoring position. Kepler is one in scoring position. Lunges and swings and misses. It's one and one. Or maybe got a barely got a piece of it. Either way, it's a strike. One and one now on Cole Uran. Kepler at second. Dominic at first. Two away in the second. Bears have already scored two to make it a five-nothing lead. Here's the one-one. Siler Breaker upstairs just a bit. Two and one. Maybe in. Look forward to being back here to Brian again next month when the districts for Division 4 will be played here. Archibald's in Division 3. They'll play their district in Defiance. Brian in Division 2 will head to Archibald as far as the district if those teams advance that far. Called strike 
on Uran, and it's now two and two. Deuces wild now here. Two balls, two strikes, two down, two on, two runs in here in the second inning. Here comes Siler's 2-2 delivery. Called strike three. And that will do it for Brian in the inning. They do add to their lead on the Jace Kepler single to right field that played it a pair of runs. Two complete here in Brian. Five nothing Bears on B Rock Sports. Hi, this is Russ Davies with Andrews O'Neill and Lowe Insurance Agency. Community means caring for the people we call neighbors and the places we call home. For the past hundred years, Andrews O'Neill and Lowe has been proud to do just that. In partnership with Central Insurance, we're honored by your trust in us to protect your family, assets, business, and everything that matters most to you. Thanks for being a part of our story. We've provided you peace of mind over the past century and look forward to doing the same for the next hundred years. Learn more at andrewsoneillandlowe.com. Tools, tools, and more tools at Donaldson's Ace Hardware on North Union Street in Bryan. Need tools for that outdoor project? Donaldson's has you covered. Buy a DeWalt 20-volt max lithium-ion compact impact wrench, high-torque impact wrench, jigsaw, orbital sander, or compact router, and get a power stack battery two-pack for free. Donaldson's also offers a DeWalt 20-volt max trimmer and blower combo kit for only $1.99 with Ace Rewards. All this and so much more at Donaldson's Ace Hardware in Bryan. Ace, the helpful place. Five nothing our score. Brian in control here early. Five runs on five hits. Archibald, no runs, still searching for their first hit here early in this game. And one air. Dominic has faced the minimum thus far because remember Siler was picked off. He's been the only base runner for the Blue Streaks. Bottom third. Of the Archibald lineup, Broden Piercefield, Josiah Gomez, and Anthony Williams coming up here in this inning. Piercefield hitting 389, which is good for second best on the team. Has an on base of 500 and an OPS of 1,056. No homers, four runs driven in for Piercefield. The junior is DHing for Brady Basic. Righty versus righty. Dominic staked to the 5 nothing lead. Rocks and fires a fastball down Broadway at 80 for strike one. Nothing and one on Piercefield. A couple of seniors behind him in Gomez and Williams. Dominic's 0-1 delivery. Slider is good and there for strike two. Was cut on two and missed. Nothing in two here on Broden Piercefield. He has a wide stance at the plate as well. The two strike, another breaking ball. This one, strike three. Froze Piercefield. That's just the first strikeout of the game for Carter Dominic. Defense has been good behind him, and now it'll be Josiah Gomez. Gomez, the right fielder, hitting .062 on the year as Dominic delivers high. A couple of runs batted in for Gomez this season. Here comes Dominic's 1-0 pitch outside with a fastball, 1-1. One one. Talked a little bit about the tradition of both these teams and touched on Matt Whistler just a little bit. Archbold right now, a couple of kids fouled back by Gomez that are playing at BG. Talk about a team that is playing fantastic baseball right now. The Bowling Green Falcons. Northwest Ohio is dotting that roster up right now as they lead the MAC. Here's the 2-1 pitch from Dominic. A fastball that's grounded towards short. On about the third hop, Heward guns across and retires Gomez for out number two. Great play at short that time by Heward. Two down in the inning for Anthony Williams. Williams will dig in at 231 with four runs batted in on the season. But Archibald grad and sophomore at BG, strike one, Anthony Williams. DJ Newman, kind of the Mac version of Shohei. He is hitting 359 to lead Bowling Green at the plate. 
the next offering. Swung on and missed, 0-2. Slugging, 656. Newman, nine homers, 35 runs batted in, 46 hits. That leads the team in all those categories. And, oh, by the way, in 42 and a third innings pitched, he's got a 361 earned run average for the Falcons. Here's the 0-2. Swung on, lifted into the air to Uran in left field. About medium deep and another one, two, three inning. Middle of the third. More on BG and Blue Streaks playing there and more when we come back. It's 5 nothing, Brian going to the bottom of the third on B-Rock Sports. Are you ready to tackle your next projects with the best equipment in town? Then look no further than Black Swamp Equipment, serving Bryant, Archbolt, and Defiance. Right now, we have incredible deals on steel chainsaws. Whether you're a seasoned pro or a weekend warrior, steel has you covered. And that's not all. Need to chip or split that wood? We've got you covered with wood chipper and wood splitter rentals, too. But wait, there's more. Our Milwaukee tool sale is happening now. Upgrade your tool kit with top-quality Milwaukee tools at unbeatable prices stop in or give us a call to discover everything that's on sale black swamp equipment locations in Bryan, archbold and defiance I'm here at Thackler Monument in Montpelier, Ohio, with Sierra and Paul Rory Jr., the third-generation owners. At Thackler Monument, you have a large indoor display. We feature the largest indoor display in the tri-state area. Monuments, cremation products, mausoleums, vases, address markers, even pet markers. Go online to FacklerMonument.com to see what we have to offer. That's FacklerMonument.com. The Thackler Monument Company of Montpelier, Ohio, serving families in the tri-state area since 1924. 5 nothing. Brian in front. We go to the bottom half of the third inning. By the way, Brian and Archibald playing softball here at Recreation Park in Brian. one nothing. Lady Bears lead Archibald. That's in the fourth inning of play there. So for Brian, it will be 6, 7, and 8. Lazarus Lane, Carter Luce, and Camden Bukowski to face Jaden Seiler. Seiler looking for anything resembling a quick inning here gets lane to swing and miss lane has an rbi single in his only plate appearance here's the one strike from siler slider will roller toward the hole at short stephen diller throws across lane is out for the first out of the inning so we talked about newman at bg also there is rigo ramos the lanky lefty that was an integral part of archibald and their runs during his career. He's gone 28 and a third innings. Does have a seven ERA, but is pitching and is learning and developing. Also on that BG team from Northwest Ohio. Cut on Carter Luce, pops it up, skies it on the infield. Now it'll drift just back into shallow center field. Diller, the shortstop, makes the grab for out number two to Carter Luce. Connor Penrod from Wasion, Landon Williman of Napoleon, also on that BG roster as well. Then you go to Toledo and you get Caden Klein from Defiance, Jackson Bergman from Hicksville, R.J. Schunk from Evergreen. Down at OU, Jaden Jerger of Defiance is on that roster. So Northwest Ohio dotting the MAC rosters. Fastball strike to Bukowski. He reached on an air and scored a run his first time up. Siler is now an out away from his first one, two, three inning. Two down bases empty. Off speed, Bukowski cuts and misses, and it's 0-2. No balls, two strikes. Streaks are six and three. Bears are six and five. The next pitch is sliced foul off to the right. We'll do it again at 0-2. League records, Archbold 2-0, Brian 2-1. Brian will be at Rossford tomorrow while Archibald gets Delta in a makeup NWOAL game. Then Brian goes to Liberty Center on Thursday while Archibald will host rival Wasion on Thursday. 0 and 2 on Bukowski. Siler deals down in the dirt. A ball and two strikes. Saturday the streaks are at Genoa while Brian will be at Otsego. Again, Evergreen showing the way in the NWOAL at 4 and 0. Oh. One ball, two strikes on Bukowski. The pitch, 2 and 2. Evergreen 
see who they still have. They will be at Patrick Henry on Thursday as their next league game. And again, as we said, Evergreen in action today against Swanton. Ball threes. Siler overthrew that one. Evergreen at Swanton and then Patrick Henry. They've been fortunate to get their league games in with no rainouts. Here's the payoff. Swung on, ground ball. Diller has a chance to retire everybody this inning. Throws across and does so in a 1-2-3 third inning. Three in the books here at Ray Sumter Field in Bryan. Your NWOAL matchup between the Bears and the Blue Streaks sees Bryan on top of Archibald 5 nothing. The more your life changes, the more your insurance needs change. See Danielle Van Atta of Danielle Van Atta Agency today. She can conduct a free personal insurance review to help you determine how much and what type of coverage is right for you with no costly gaps or overlaps. Interested? Phone Danielle Van Atta today at 419-636-0408. I'm here at Fackler Monument in Montpelier, Ohio with Sierra and Paul Rory Jr., the new owners. But really, Paul, your family has been serving the area for a long time. That's right, Tim. We're the third generation and it all started with my grandpa George. Paul, many people are being cremated. Are there memorial options for cremation? Many people still choose a headstone in which the ashes are placed under the monument and sealed within the stone. There's cremation benches where the ashes are placed in the legs of the bench, and there's also columbariums. So, Sierra, there are many shapes and styles to choose from, whether a traditional burial or cremation? That's right, and we understand that it can be a little overwhelming. That's why it's important to come talk to us so that we can guide you with our experience to help help you pre-plan. Our experienced team realizes that it's not easy to select a memorial in a time of sorrow, so we invite you to come visit with us as part of your pre-planning. Go online to FacklerMonument.com to see what we have to offer. The Fackler Monument Company of Montpelier, Ohio, serving families in the tri-state area since 1924. Moving to the fourth inning, it's 5-0, uh, Brian, and the Blue Streaks are back to the top of the order. Jack Hurst, Stephen Diller and Jaden Seiler to face Carter Dominic here in the fourth inning. Bears getting three in the first and two more in the second in building this 5 nothing advantage. Hurst 0 for 1 with a ground out in this game. Hurst began the afternoon at 4.06, number one hitter. On this Archibald team. Righty righty matchup. Dominic's first offering is inside with a fastball. Ball one. 82 on that one. Kind of been in that 80 to 82 range with a fastball, maybe touching 83 or 4 on occasion. Here's Dominic's 1 0 delivery. Outside corner with another fastball. Strike one. Fastball slider. Change up curve. One and one on Hurst. Dominic deals. Breaker inside, two and one. Outfield about medium deep. Straight away for the most part. Here's the two one pitch. Sails a little bit on him, and Dominic behind three and one. Has issued one walk today, recorded one strikeout. Everything else has been four ground outs. Couple of fly outs and a line out. Inside corner, strike two. Hurst thought that was ball four. Count now full, three and two. You're listening to NWOAL baseball on a Monday evening on WBNO FM Brian. Here's Dominic's 3 2 pitch. Missed up high for ball four. Second base runner of the game for the Blue Streaks. And that'll bring up Steven Diller. Diller flew out to Uran in left field, so he is 0 for 1. Diller, right-handed batter. Hurst can run, will run, but down 5. Probably not thinking that more station to station as that fastball sails high, ball 1. Jaden Seiler on deck. Zach Short had thrown a little bit. Seiler, though, looked good in that third inning. Maybe he's settling in now. Here's Dominic's 1-0 delivery. Called strike on Diller, 1-1. One one. 
Dominic in his junior season, the clear-cut number one for this Bryan team. They have arms. They have some depth. Dominic is the number one. The throw over, and Hurst is back safely. Again, Chris Fiddler calling balls and strikes. Steve Elwood on the bases this afternoon. One and one on Stephen Diller. The Archibald shortstop. Jack Hurst is at first. Still no hits for the Blue Streaks. Just two walks today. A swing and a miss. One and two. And when Seiler walked, he was picked off back in the first inning. One ball, two strikes on Diller. One error in this game committed. That by the Blue Streaks. Here comes Dominic's 1-2. There goes Hurst. Swung on. Ground ball to Kepler at third. Has only one play. Making the turn. Hurst will try to get to third. And he is out. Jace Kepler was taken down on the slide by Hurst, who thought he had third base pretty well taken because Kepler's play was in the hole. And with that torn ACL already and the meniscus situation, always a breath of concern. Again, what we said, though, you can't do probably too much more damage, but chopped down on the slide, and it wasn't malicious. But still, they make sure he's okay, and he is. And a bang, bang play to get. So it's 5-3 to three to retire Diller, and then Hurst is thrown out 3-5. to five. And now there are two away for Jaden Seiler. And you wonder, was Hurst running on his own there? I mean, you're down five here, middle of the game. You don't want to be giving outs away. It did take a good defensive play then. First baseman Carter Luce throwing it across to get him. That one is rocketed into left field, but right at Uran for er, the final out of the inning on the fly out by Seiler. So a walk and then they get two in the same retiring of Stephen Diller, and then the fly out to end the inning. Halfway home in Bryan, Bears five streaks nothing. Are you ready to elevate your archery game? Then look no further than Knocking Point Outfitters, conveniently located just outside of Bryan off US Route 6. No need to worry about the weather. We've got an indoor archery range to keep you on target and in top form. Call for open range hours and coming soon, experience the thrill of techno hunt and 3D archery. Bring your own bows and all you have to do is snag our special tips. Plus discover our extensive selection of guns, bows and ammo in stock. Knocking Point is your go-to destination for all things archery and more. Visit us today and let the adventure begin. Knocking Point Outfitters, the starting point for every perfect shot. Fall is a great time to work on your home. Is your home well insulated? Field Supply Center in Blakesley is now stocking the Attic Cat and the Pro Cat Blown Insulation System. Forget about the dust from the old blown insulation. Attic Cat is the new clean way to insulate your walls and attic. Field Supply Center also offers certain teed landmark shingles, one of the best shingles for your roof. Now is the time to take care of your home. Whether you need insulation, shingles, siding, or window, make Field Supply in Blakesley your first stop. Mid-game update brought to you by the main stops of Northwest Ohio. Always open when you need them. The main stops of Northwest Ohio. Bears getting three in the first, two in the second. Jace Kepler has a single that scored two runs. Carter Dominic has an RBI double. Lazarus Lane, an RBI single. Cade Carlin, a ground ball out. Meanwhile, no hits allowed through four innings of work by Carter Dominic. In fact, just two base runners. And they have been base running mistakes by Archibald, as that is ball one to Elijah Fry. It's 9 1 and 2 for the Bears. Seiler walked in the first inning and then was picked off. That one's fouled away by Fry. And then in this fourth inning, Hurst walked. And then on the Diller ground ball out that took Kepler into the hole, uh, third and short. Hurst thought he could uh, round second, get to third, but the throw by Luce back over to third, able to retire Hurst in a 5 nothing game. One and two, the count now on Fry as he swings and misses. Fry one for one with a single and a run scored. That's your mid-game update brought to you by the main stops of Northwest Ohio. Breaking ball called strike three on Fry. 
for the first out of the inning. That'll bring up Noah Heward. Heward one for one with a single and a run scored and a sacrifice bunt. Seiler just trying to keep Archibald right here and hope the offense comes alive in their final three at bats. Heward swings and misses. 0-1. Jace Kepler on deck. Bears needing this one. A second league loss would be enormously damaging to them. The 0-1. Seiler misses away 1-1. One one. Archibald is 2-0. So it wouldn't be quite as damaging to them. The next offering is popped up and will curl into the unplayable zone off to the right side. Blue Streaks do still see Evergreen, the team in front of them. So a loss here would at least still allow them to control and see Evergreen. Here's the one-two pitch to Fry. It is going to be hit into the air straight away. Shallow center field. Hurst. A couple of beats in, two down in the inning now on the Noah Heward fly out to center. That'll bring Jace Kepler to the plate. Kepler one for one with a single and a walk. He has two RBIs, a run scored, and a stolen base today. Bats here with two down and the base is empty in the home half of the fourth inning. Seiler, fastball just missed a touch outside, 1-0. I want to thank Brian A.D., Nathan Keel, and taking care of us here. A little bouncer foul down the third baseline, one and one. Also to the coaches, Jeff Brunswick of Archibald and Corey Walker of Brian for behind-the-scenes duties. Two down, bases empty, fourth inning, 5 nothing. Brian. The 1-1 to Kepler, and it hit him square in the back. It was a breaking ball. He's on base for a third time in three appearances. And that'll bring up Carter Dominic, who's been on twice. He's one for one with an RBI double and a run scored and has also walked today in that three hole. Be interested to see what all sports will look like when we go to more divisions next year. Baseball would be one of them. Ball outside, throw down to first. Kepler hadn't gotten off too far. 1-0 now on Dominic. It's a whole new world starting next season with added divisions. 1-0 on Carter Dominic. Seiler is set. Swing and a miss, 1-1. One one. Righty, righty matchup here. Hurst playing... A few feet shy of the warning track in straightaway center. The 1-1. Swung on and rocketed into left field for a base hit. Dominic's second hit of the afternoon. Kepler making the turn, looking to get to third. Slides in safely. Ball bounces away from Burroughs. Seiler hustles after it, moving to second. On that throwing error will be Dominic. And now they're in scoring position. That will be a second error on Archibald because that's a throw that got away. Nice job by Seiler to go get it and keep Kepler at third. So second and third and two away for Cade Carlin. Carlin, an RBI ground out and a pop out in this game. Seiler will go from the windup, the pitch. Breaking ball up and a little bit outside, perhaps 1-0. One ball, no strikes on the Bryan center fielder. <coughs> Excuse me, sophomore Cade Carlin. Seiler's 1-0. Sails up high, 2-0. Kepler at third, Dominic at second, two down. This after Bryan was on the verge of going 1-2-3. Carlin takes a fastball low, and it's 3-0 now on Carlin. Cole Uran is on deck. Bears with five runs on six hits and no errors. Streaks, no runs, no hits, and two errors. Strike grooved in there. 
It's now 3-1 and one on Cade Carlin. Seiler wanting to work quickly. The 3-1 pitch. Swung on, fisted in the air, right field. Josiah Gomez moving over toward the line, makes the grab, and the Bears will strand two runners in the inning. Four complete here in Bryan. Still, Bears five. Blue streaks nothing on B-Rock Sports. The Fountain City Amphitheater provides opportunities for families and friends to have fun at many different events. After winning season 21 of The Voice on Team Kelly, Girl Named Tom recently performed a free concert on the AMP's incredible outdoor stage, thanks to numerous corporate and family sponsors. With a five-tier sponsorship opportunity, you can help support this project and all that is to come. Sponsorships promote brand exposure and include unique bonuses with each tier. To learn more about how you can help provide quality programming at the AMP, visit cityofbryan.com slash fcamphitheater. Family is at the heart of everything we do. At Midwest Community Federal Credit Union, we understand that your family's needs evolve over time, and we're here to support you through every stage of your journey, whether it's saving for your kid's education, upgrading to a larger home, or planning for retirement. We're here to help you prioritize what matters most. Join us at Midwest Community, and let's build a stronger financial future for your family. Visit us online at midwestcommunity.org to learn more today. 5 nothing, Brian, as we move into the fifth inning here on this Monday evening at Sumter Field. It'll be 4, 5, and 6 for the Blue Streaks. Brian Burroughs, Mason Siegel, and Jet Bond to face Carter Dominic. Blue Streaks still in search of that first hit of the afternoon. Carter Dominic also has a no-no on the season from earlier in the year. Came in with an earned run average of .21. Has given up just one earned run on the season. It will be Brian Burroughs who lined out to Kepler his first time up. In fact, it started back-to-back. -back really good defensive plays by Jace Kepler at third. From the first base side of the rubber, Carter Dominic stares in. Both umpires say they are ready as Short is back out throwing again for the streaks. Dominic's first pitch of the fifth inning is a called strike. 0-1 on Brian Burroughs. Here is the 0-1 pitch. It's a breaking ball, popped up, shallow right field. Coming on to make the grab will be Mason Welling for the first out of the inning. Called off Lazarus Lane. Nice play by Welling and Wright. Here's Mason Siegel, 0 for 1, with that ground out to Kepler. Had that good pick on the second hop. One away. Here's the Dominic pitch cut on and missed by Siegel. Haven't heard anything on what's going on in that evergreen. Swanton matchup. Swanton two and two and six and five on the year, so not necessarily a gimme. The pitch swung on, fouled away, and out of play. And now Siegel in an 0-2 hole. Five runs, six hits, no errors for the Bears. No runs, no hits, two errors for the Blue Streaks in this one. Dominic head shake now head nod has his pitch. Here is the 0-2 delivery. Up and away, one and two. Siegel not having any of that fastball. One ball and two strikes. Three in the first, two in the second for Brian. The one-two, way up. Two and two. In fact, sailed back to the screen. Two balls and two strikes on Mason Siegel. He is the blue streak first baseman. Carter rocks in the 2-2. A swing and a miss, strike three. Second strikeout of the afternoon for Dominic as the defense behind him has been good. We talked about Archibald's defense before with only 13 errors. Brian has committed only 18 on the season, so they've been good. That's in 11 games, and Archibald's was in nine games. 
Here's Jet Vaughn, the Archibald catcher. He grounded out to Heward at shortstop in his only appearance. Takes a fastball on the inside corner at 81, strike one. 0-1 oh, on Jet Vaughn. Two down, bases empty, fifth inning. 5 nothing, Brian. Dominic's 0-1 pitch. Swung on, grounded foul up the third baseline here. And now 0-2 and, and a chance for a quick inning for Carter Dominic here on the mound. Nothing in two. Here's Dominic's two-strike pitch. Just a bit high and maybe a little bit in. One and two. Softball, by the way, Sunday will be announcing their tournament pairings. Remember with the change in the schedule a few years back, baseball will draw on Monday, May or Sunday, May 5th. A ground ball toward the hole. This is going to be a tough play. Heward from deep in the hole throws across and they say that Loose pulled his foot. And he's made the turn. He's considered to be in play right now. They'll tag him out. I think that should be an out. He made the turn to get into play. So now what's the official call? So Steve Elwood said that Carter Luce had pulled his foot was the initial call of safe. But then on the turn, Vaughn turned into the field of play. Didn't turn into foul territory, turned into the field of play. That should be a tag and an out. Steve Elwood talking with Chris Fiddler now. What's the call? They're going to say he's staying. That's the wrong call. He turned into the field of play. This goes back to Little League. You are taught when you go hustling down the line, always stay in foul territory and turn into foul territory. Vaughn did not. He was in shallow right field and fair ground. The initial call was that Carter Luce had pulled his foot on the throw. What a play by Heward in the hole. I mean, he rifled it over there to first. Corey Walker is making his plea. And it's a simple, I mean, he's doing it very diplomatically. Brian has to just now flush it because it's going to stay that way and now I think you're going to have to call that an infield single we'll have to get the official call on that maybe between innings on Bond or is it E3 and pulling his foot that'd be the difference in a potentially a hit no hit game the first pitch is a breaking ball that's in on Broden Piercefield he struck out his first time up. Third Archibald base runner of the game. The first two were via the walk route. 5 nothing. Brian in the fifth. Here's the pitch. Fastball on the outside corner. Strike one. One and one on Broden Piercefield. He's the DH today for Brady Basic, the Archibald second baseman. A ball and a strike. The pitch. Got him to swing at one out of the zone. One and two. That's an absolute miss. One ball, two strikes. In the big scope of things, it may not mean much. Here's the one-two pitch. Up and away, two and two. To add to it, Bond had taken a couple of steps in that direction toward second. And that was what Corey Walker's argument was, that he had made steps to go towards second. The 2-2 got him to wave at one out of the zone for strike three. So the base runner does no damage. They strand a runner. It's still 5 nothing. Blue Streaks, and they have officially said it was an infield single, is what the official book will say. Just to go back and finish that, that was a terrific play by Heward to to throw from deep in the hole he's in shallow left field and it was close to see if he had even pulled his foot at first anyways to start things but that was a judgment call the second one 
I still say, in my humble opinion, not only did he make the turn, but Vaughn had taken two, three steps toward the direction of second, and that makes him live. We have a new pitcher, Zach Short. We'll talk to you about him and more when we come back. Bears in control, up 5-0. With spring here, head to Donaldson's Ace Hardware on North Union Street in Bryan to get your yard ready. Scott's will start you on the right track with their four-step program. Then grab a bag of Scott's Turf Builder Weed and Feed or Scott's Turf Builder Holtz Crabgrass Preventer with lawn food and save $5 instantly. Donaldson's also carries garden soil, potting soil, and mulch for your landscaping projects or pick up Roundup Dual Action Weed and Grass Killer plus four-month preventer and get Roundup Dual Action Weed and Grass Killer refill for free. Donaldson's Ace Hardware on Union Street in Bryan has you covered. Ace, the helpful place. Are you in need of quality furniture and appliances? Look no further than DirectLink Appliance and Furniture. With Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid Appliances, and Ashley Furniture, and Jamison Mattresses, and new to the store, Molecule Mattresses. Made right in Auburn, Indiana. You'll find everything you need for your home. Plus, our trained technicians provide service to all makes and models of appliances. With unbeatable prices and impeccable customer service, DirectLink Appliance and Furniture is your one-stop shop for all your home needs. Don't wait. Shop DirectLink Appliance and Furniture today. Welcome back out here to Brian. It is a 5 nothing lead, and it is being scored an infield single just to complete that for Jet Vaughn. Bottom of the fifth inning, it will be Cole Uran, Lazarus Lane, and Carter Luce for the Bears. 5, 6, and 7. Uran has struck out a couple of times today, once swinging and once looking. He'll be the first Bear to face Zach Short, who has come on. Jaden Seiler, after the four innings of work, will go to second base now. Brady Basic is out of the game. Five runs on six hits allowed by Seiler. Short paints the outside corner to Uran at 76 for a strike. The next offering from Short is strike two. Uran struck out twice. Loose struck out once. Fry struck out one, so four strikeouts on the game for Jaden Seiler. Here's the 0-2 from Short. Off speed, misses away, one and two. Two walks issued and a hit batsman by Seiler. Bears got to him early and often in building this 5-0 lead. Fouled away, good protective swing that time by Uran to stay alive. One ball, two strikes. Short a lefty, facing the right-handed hitting Uran. One ball, two strikes, the pitch. Up and away, two and two. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. Brian leading Archbold 5-0 on the Andres O'Neill and Lowe scoreboard. Three in the first, two in the second. The one, uh, two, two. Called strike three. And Uran down on strikes for a third time this afternoon, now this evening. And that'll bring up Lazarus Lane, one for two with an RBI single. Grounded out his last time up. Short, maybe just a touch under Seiler. Well, Let's say he they're they're comparable speed wise. That pitch missed in at 79, but maybe short throws just a touch harder. Actually, that fastball is on the outside corner, so he just early looks at him here. He's upper 70s, sitting 78, 79 consistently here. One and one on Lane. The next offering, slider cut on and bounced foul. One and two. Five runs, six hits, no errors for Brian. No runs, one hit and two errors for the Blue Streaks. Dominic with two hits. Kepler with a hit. Heward with a hit. Lane with a hit. The next pitch swung on, lined in the right center field of base hit. Good bit of hitting that time for Lane, who will pick up his second single of the game. And the seventh, Brian hit, a one-out single here in the fifth inning. Will bring up Carter Luce. Loose is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a pop-out this afternoon. The lone lefty in the Bryan lineup. So lefty, lefty here. 
Lane, not much of a lead at all, fouled away by Luce. Nothing in one. Again, this is our only broadcast game this week. Next week, we'll head to Defiance for a Brian Defiance matchup on Friday the 3rd. Then a makeup game on Tuesday, May 7th in the BBC. That will be Eden at Montpelier. Montpelier leading the way in the BBC right now. 0-1. The pitch. Swung on, little fister up the middle, and Luce collects a hit. Back-to-back -back singles. Lazarus Lane, Carter Luce. Good job by the lefty there, just fighting off a pitch on the hands for the eighth hit of the game for Brian, and the first for him. And that'll bring up freshman catcher Camden Bukowski. Bukowski 0 for 2, reached on an error by Brian Burrows at third and grounded out. Bukowski has also scored one of the five runs. Will he be bunting here? Nope, he was taking on that pitch, and it's a strike, 0-1. Bukowski, the number eight hitter for the Bears. First and second, one down. The next offering, a little slow bouncer up the third baseline. Coming off the mound is short, guns it over to first to retire Bukowski. Runners will move up on that ground out by Bukowski. Good play by Zach Short coming off the mound. Two away. Lefty had to pivot. What did they say? He pulled his foot? Okay, yeah. I mean, Bukowski was still standing out there. But Steve Elwood said he was gone, and he was, he, and he didn't pull his foot. Mason Siegel did a good job hanging on there. Now it's Elijah Fry. He's one for two with a single and a run scored. First pitch is away off the fastball, and that one ratcheted up to 82 for Zach Short. Second and third, two away. The 1-0 to Fry. Called strike on the outside corner. Really good location there of that pitch for Short. In relief of Jaden Seiler. 5-0, Brian. Uh, fifth inning, two away. Bouncer, it's fouled. It bounced off of the plate. Bounced off the foot also, too, of Fry. DHing for Mason Welling. Five runs, eight hits, no errors for Brian. No runs, one hit, two errors for the Blue Streaks. Short with a long stare in, now straightens, and the lanky lefty will step off the mound. Lane is at third. Luce is at second. The one-two pitch to Fry called strike three on the outside corner. And the Bears leave two more stranded in this one. They still have the lead through five. They're up five, five-nothing over Archibald. We'll be back. Pelt's Lumber Company in Montpelier and Pioneer has some exciting news. Not only has Pelt's been bringing you the finest in building materials for generations, now they have a new website with a huge selection of items for you to browse right at your fingertips and in your own home. Just go to Pelt'sLumber.com and hit the products button. And there it is. Tools, hardware, lumber yard and building materials, windows, doors, kitchen and bath. Check out the items you need and the prices and stop by the store in Montpelier or Pioneer or give them a call at 419-485-3059. Pelt's Lumber, building for a new generation just three words tell you everything you need to know they tell you why we employ more than 2,000 workers at our factory in Virginia Beach and why over 10,000 local steel dealers are putting battery power in the hands of Americans not everyone can say that but we can made in America real steel Find yours. See Black Swamp Equipment in Bryan, Archbold, and Defiance. Welcome back out here to Ray Sumter Field in Bryan. It is 5 nothing. Bears on top with five in the books here. As that wind continues to blow out into center field. It's been pretty consistent, consistent, pretty steady in that, what, maybe 8 to 12 mile an hour range here this afternoon. A game that began with temperatures in the lower 60s. 
with feels like temps in the upper 50s today. We will take all of it, though. Lots of sunshine today and a good day to be out here with some rain potentially moving in or probably moving into tomorrow and wreaking some havoc with Tuesday games. Josiah Gomez, Anthony Williams, and Jack Hurst do up here for Archibald in the sixth inning. It's 8, 9, and 1 to face Carter Dominic, and cutting and missing is Gomez for strike one. Gomez grounded out to Heward at short in his only plate appearance. Here's Dominic's 0-1. Breaking ball, ground ball, foul. Up the third baseline. More activity down in that Archibald bullpen. Mm, looks like it's Burroughs potentially throwing. 0-2 oh here on Gomez. Dominic's pitch up high with a fastball, 1-2. and two. About 80-82, to 82, as we said, is where Dominic has been hitting with the velo today. Occasional 83 or 4. Here's Dominic's 1-2. Sharp slider, but it stayed away, and it's 2-2. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes on Josiah Gomez. And Dominic's pitch, a swing and a miss, strike three. Starting to add some strikeouts as we go along here. Four of them now in this game. That'll bring up Anthony Williams, 0 for 1 with a fly out to Uran in left field. He only hit a Jet Vaughn infield single last inning. A couple of walks, that one the low and away, 1-0. Brian jumping on Jaden Seiler, getting three in the first, adding two more in the second. They've had a couple of other chances to add to it. A swing and a miss by Williams, 1-1. One and one. Brian has played clean defensively today, too, behind Carter Dominic. The 1-1 one, one pitch called strike two. One and two now on the Archibald number nine hitter. Dominic stares in to Bukowski. Here we go. The one-two delivery. Down low, two and two. This is where you hope to team-wise find game rhythm now getting closer and closer to tournament time weather warming up strike three called as Williams is frozen at the dish two away and it's Jack Hurst now Hurst 0 for 1 with a walk he grounded out his first time up walked last time up and remember on a throw across by Kepler was Trying to take third and was retired loose to Kepler. First coming back to third and the tag out got him. Ball one to Hurst. But yeah, that weather you hope starts to warm up now. You get into the 60s, 70s, maybe as we get into May, potentially nearing 80 on some days. And then you get rhythm in playing games. And you want to be building that momentum for the second week of May and beyond when the postseason begins. Here's the 1-0. Inside corner with a Curveball for a strike, one and one. Talked in the last game that we did, Eden and North Central, about how, like for an example, how long basketball season or wrestling season is. The winter sports season is long. Chop foul, one and two. Then it feels like everything in the spring is just slammed together, whether you're a baseball player, a softball player, track player, coaches as well. But then it just feels like because you get weathered out and then boom, 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 you're playing Nine games over 11 days, and then it's tournament. Here's Dominic's 1-2. A swing and a miss, strike three. Getting stronger as the game goes as he strikes out the side. Middle of the sixth in Bryan. Five-nothing Bears on B-Rock Sports.
Hello, I'm Paul Rorick Jr. And I'm Sierra with the Fackler Monument Company in Montpelier, Ohio. Are you searching for a lasting memorial to honor your loved ones? Let us guide you through the entire process of choosing a memorial with compassion and care. Come visit our showroom. We have the largest indoor display in the tri-state area. Fackler Monument Company, where three generations of tradition and trust come together. Visit our website at facklermonument.com. We have been serving families in the tri-state area since 1924. Your home is the one one place where everything should be perfect, including your air. Starks Plumbing and Heating Services helps you achieve the perfect air you deserve with reliable, groundbreaking, award-winning Lennox products. Call Starks Plumbing and Heating Services and see how soon you can get a Lennox home comfort system that'll help improve your health and your mood. It doesn't get any more perfect than that. Call us today at 1-800-329-4040 or visit us at StarksPHS.com. The Fountain City Amphitheater provides opportunities for families and friends to have fun at many different events. After winning season 21 of The Voice on Team Kelly, Girl Named Tom recently performed a free concert on the AMP's incredible outdoor stage thanks to numerous corporate and family sponsors. With a five-tier sponsorship opportunity, you can help support this project and all that is to come. Sponsorships promote brand exposure and include unique bonuses with each tier. To learn more about how you can help provide quality programming at the AMP, visit cityofbryan.com slash FC Amphitheater. Five nothing, Brian. Bears looking for you can never have you ask any coach, you never can have enough runs. You're up five, you're in control seemingly here. Late game, bottom of the sixth inning, but anything can happen. It's baseball. Top of the order for the Bears. This will be the fourth time through. Noah Heward, Jace Kepler, Carter Dominic. First time they are seeing Zach Short, who's in relief of Jaden Seiler. Heward is one for two in this game has a single a run scored a sacrifice bunt and he flew out to hurst in center field last time up short exclusively from the stretch gets hewer to pop one up in foul ground bon the catcher is there and one pitch and one out here in the bottom of the sixth inning to get hewer that'll bring up jace kepler officially today one for one but has been on base three times that hit was a single that scored two going the opposite way a walk and a hit by pitch takes low and inside ball one two rbis a run scored and a stolen base and has played a stellar third base tonight for brian ahead here of short one and oh the next pitch is fisted foul and out of play off to the right That'll even the count at a ball and a strike. Blue Streaks will be sending Stephen Diller, Jaden Seiler, and Brian Burrows to the plate. Two, three, and four in the seventh inning. Off-speed pitch from short, two and one. Is that missed away? Five runs, eight hits for Brian. No runs, one hit, and two errors for Archibald. Here's shorts, two, one. A swing and a miss, two and two. Shorts look good in his limited time of relief here. Handcuffing this Bears offense so far. 2-2, lifted in the air on the infield. Calling everybody off is Siler, the second baseman. Just a shade to the right of being behind second base and out number two. As Kepler is finally kept off the base paths. Speaking of being kept off the base paths, they'd love to be able to finally retire Carter Dominic. He is two for two with an RBI, a run scored, and a walk tonight. Plus has got a one-hitter going on the mound and a shutout. Short's first pitch is away with a fastball. That one ramped up to 85. 1-0 on Carter Dominic. The 1-0 from short, inside corner for a strike. Bears have dropped five of their last seven coming into this game after the 4-0 start. Did he lay off? Nope, unable to hold back. One and two now on that breaking ball. Two down, bases empty, bottom of the sixth inning. Five-nothing Bears. The 1-2 from short. Outside, two and two.
Two balls, two strikes, two away. Shorts pitch. Just missed with a fastball, three and two. Haven't been very many of these today. Can they get a one, two, three inning? Swing and a miss, strike three, and Dominic down on strikes. Nothing across for Brian in the sixth. Last chance time for the Blue Streaks. We go to the seventh inning, and Brian on top, five nothing. The Bryan Athletic Boosters would like to wish all the student athletes the best of luck in all their sports this year. The Boosters are proud of your commitment to becoming Bryan Built. It takes a lot of time and dedication to play sports and be the best student you can be at the same time. Good luck this year. The Bryan Athletic Boosters would also like to thank all of their corporate and individual patron supporters this year as well. It takes everyone to make a community and to become Bryan Built. Are you ready to elevate your archery game? Then look no further than Knocking Point Outfitters, conveniently located just outside of Bryan off US Route 6. No need to worry about the weather. We've got an indoor archery range to keep you on target and in top form. Call for open range hours and coming soon, experience the thrill of techno hunt and 3D archery. Bring your own bows and all you have to do is snag our special tips. Plus discover our extensive selection of guns, bows and ammo in stock. Knocking Point is your go-to destination for all things archery and more. Visit us today and let the adventure begin. Knocking Point Outfitters, the starting point for every perfect shot. Pelt's Lumber Company in Montpelier and Pioneer has some exciting news. Not only has Pelt's been bringing you the finest in building materials for generations, now they have a new website with a huge selection of items for you to browse right at your fingertips and in your own home. Just go to Pelt'sLumber.com and hit the products button. And there it is. Tools, hardware, lumber yard and building materials, windows, doors, kitchen and bath. Check out the items you need and the prices and stop by the store in Montpelier or Pioneer or give them a call at 419-485-3059. Pelt's Lumber, building for a new generation carter dominic working on a one hitter in this one his defense behind him has been really good today and now three outs away from moving to three and one in the nwoal he has to go through stephen diller Jaden seiler and brian burrows the heart of the archbold order diller is 0 for two with a fly out and a ground out and takes up high ball one Flew out to Uran in left and grounded out to Kepler at third in his two at-bats. A ball and no strikes. Dominic deals. Swing and a miss, one and one. Dominic has been in control from the get-go against this good Archibald lineup. Here's the one-one. Slider got him to swing and miss. One and two. Seven strikeouts. Six strikeouts, I beg your pardon. A couple of walks and allowed just the one hit. Dominic rocks the one-two. Swung on, ground ball foul down the third baseline. Also bounced off the foot of the Archibald shortstop, Diller. Guardians off tonight. Red Sox series starts tomorrow evening. Evening games tomorrow night and Wednesday, and then day baseball on Thursday from Cleveland. One ball, two strikes. The pitch to Diller. Swung on, fouled, and out of play. Diller hanging in there at a ball and two strikes. The only hit belonging to Jet Vaughn on an infield single deep into the hole. But Brian thought that they initially had him retired. On a good play from that hole by shortstop Heward. Breaking ball, defensive swing, and got a piece of it, did Diller, to continue this at bat. It remains one and two. If Brian hangs on here, and Evergreen will win, they'd be the only unbeaten team remaining in uh, Evergreen. Here's the one two. A foul on the fastball. Again, out of play, and we'll do it again. Steven Diller doing a nice job, not going quietly here in the seventh inning. One ball, two strikes. Let's go, Dewey! Dominic's pitch. 
Swung on, lifted in the air, foul territory, giving chase is Kepler at third, and he runs out of real estate up the third base line. And yet another foul off and out of play by Diller. He'll be followed by Jaden Seidler and Brian Burroughs here in the seventh inning. Now what do they go back to? It's been heat. It's been slider. Outright curveball maybe here, change. The one-two from Dominic swung on. That was going to be another breaking ball, and that was going to be a slider, hard slider. And Diller is on it right now, hanging in this at bat. One ball, two strikes again. Dominic stares in, and the pitch swung on, fouled off, off to the right, out of play. By the way, Brian, one of the teams with the change in the rule using pitch com Bukowski the catcher communicated to by an assistant so Brian electing no signaling in pitches that's been a rule change not everybody is adapting and using that Brian is here's the one two way up two and two hope to get Dillard to chase it and Dillard did not two and two this has quite possibly been the best Archibald at bat of the game now can they finish it and get a base runner? Dominic's 2-2. Swung on, fouled off. He was in front of that one. And another one. This is a double-digit at-bat here. Brian, 5, Archibald, nothing. Top of the seventh inning. Bases are empty. 2-2, two and two, the count on the number two hitter for the Blue Streak, Stephen Diller. Carter Dominic has yielded just one hit. Trying to shut the door on the streaks and get a shutout here in this one. The 2-2 from Dominic. Down in the dirt, ball three. Three balls and two strikes now on Diller. Again, 0 for 2 with a fly out to left and a ground out to Kepler at third. Outfield straight away. Three balls and two strikes. Dominic, the payoff pitch. Swung on and got a piece of it back to the screen. And the at-bat continues. Three and two on Diller. Right-hander against right-hander. Dominic stares in. He is ready. Another payoff. Just missed outside. Ball four. And Diller finishes... An incredible at bat by drawing a leadoff walk here. Still a lot of work to do down five zip, but the leadoff man is aboard here in the seventh. Third walk issued by Carter Dominic. Jaden Seiler is coming up now. He walked his first time up and then was picked off. Flew out to left. Throw over and Diller is back safely. Well, you have to believe, seventh inning, down five. Station to station baseball here. Dominic, the pitch. Sharp breaking ball that missed just a little bit. Carter Dominic wanting that call. Asking Chris Fiddler just a bit maybe where that was at. 1-0 the count here on Seiler. Here's the pitch. Upstairs just a little bit. It's 2-0 now. It's never easy. Bears up 5-0. Diller aboard at first here in the seventh. Seiler, the number three hitter in front, 2-0. The pitch. Called strike on the outside corner, 2-1. Seiler was taking all the way there. Two balls and one strike. Dominic checks Diller at first, comes set at the belt. The 2-1 delivery swung on and fouled off. Boy, Seiler was starting to bail a little bit. That front foot was coming towards head coach Jeff Brunswick, not stepping toward Dominic that time. Two and two the count. Got to two strikes on Diller. It was a double digit at bat that Diller finished off with a walk. What happens here? The 2-2 to Seiler. 
Inside and low, ball three. Nobody throwing for Brian. Game resting in Carter Dominic's hands. Three balls, two strikes. Five nothing Bears. A payoff pitch coming to Seiler. A swing and a miss, strike three. First out of the seventh inning. And that'll bring up the cleanup hitter now for Archibald, Brian Burrows. Burrows is 0 for 2 with a line out and a fly out this afternoon. One out, one on. Seventh inning, 5 nothing Bears. That was a seventh strikeout of the game for Carter Dominic. The first pitch to Burrows, he cuts and misses. Had a big cut at that one, 0 and 1. Mason Siegel on deck. Brian getting three in the first, two in the second, and that's the runs scored in this game. Dominic's 0-1. Swung on, fouled away, and Burrows in an 0-2 hole. Bears trying to stay in this league title chase. A second loss would have been crippling to Brian, but if they can hang on here, pick up two more outs, they would move to 3-1. and one. Everybody chasing undefeated Evergreen at 4-0 and oh beginning today. Here's the two-strike pitch from Dominic. Defensive swing, punched in the air, loose, looking for room, and can't make the grab. It stayed in play up that first baseline, but just unable to kind of find it last minute. Good hustle over there. And it will stay 0-2 on Burroughs. Diller is at first. One out in the inning on a Siler strikeout. Burroughs the cleanup hitter. Nothing in two on him. Dominic's 0-2 delivery. Missed outside with a fastball, one and two. One away in the inning. One hitter being thrown today by Carter Dominic as he is really clamped down on this Archibald lineup. Dominic straightens the one-two pitch. Got him to chase one out of the zone for strike three. An eighth strikeout of the game, and now Archibald down to their final out in this one. It rests on the right-handed bat of Mason Siegel. He is 0 for 2 with a ground out to Kepler at third and also one of the eight strikeout victims. Two away in the seventh. The first offering way out in front, swing and miss. Trying to strike out the side for back-to-back innings. He did it in the sixth. Nothing in one on Siegel. The pitch. Breaking ball in and low, one and one. Carter Dominic standing to get the win. Jaden Seiler would take the loss. Heward with a single, a run scored. Kepler with a single and two RBIs and a run scored. Dominic at RBI double. The one one called strike two. Also, Dominic with a single in this game. Carlin with an RBI ground out. Lane with an RBI single and another hit. So he had two hits on the game. Loose with a single. And Fry with a single and a run scored, kind of wrapping up the offense. One and two with two down in the inning. Blue Streaks down to their final strike. The pitch. Got him to swing and miss. Strike three. Game is over. Back to back to back in the sixth punch outs. And the same in the seventh. Archibald falls to Bryan by the final of five to nothing. Bears now 7-5 and five on the year, 3-1 and one in the NWOAL. Archibald drops to 6-4 and four in the league, 2-1 and one in the NWOAL. Again, Carter Dominic, the win. Jaden Seiler, the loss in this one. That'll do it for our coverage. Don't forget, next week we'll be in Defiance for Brian at Defiance on Friday, May the 3rd for our next broadcast game. One final break. More rock on the way next. Thanks for tuning in to Monday Baseball, where the Bears beat the streaks 5 nothing.